Good morning, everyone. We are the assigned reporters. I am Jeffrey Bavante, and with me is Mr. Oliver P. Banaria. So today, we are going to talk about the cognitive development in Chapter 7. To start with, may I introduce to you to the famous person behind cognitive development theory. He is none other than Jean Piaget. He is a clinical psychologist from Switzerland and known for his pioneering work in children's intellectual development. He also studied genetic epistemology or the origins of thinking. Jajay's theory of cognitive development or the process of adaptation. Adaptation means adjusting to the demands of the environment through two complementary aspects. First, assimilation. This means children attempt to interpret new experiences based on their present interpretation of the world. For example, when a child sees a baseball for the first time, they have experienced with other types of balls, new ball is assimilated into their already existing category, expanding their understanding that balls come in various sizes and colors. Next is accommodation. Children attempt to adjust existing thought structures that come for or accommodate new experiences. Example is when a child knows that dogs have four legs, so she might automatically believe that all animals with four legs are dogs. And when she later learns that cats also have four legs, she will undergo a process of accommodation in which her existing schema for dogs will change and she will also develop a new schema for cats. According to Piaget's theory of cognitive development, cognitive development has four stages. These are sensory motor, pre-operational, complete operational, and formal operational. All children follow the sequence in order, and rate and degree of completion may differ. Sensory motor stage creates a foundation for all subsequent efforts to perform bodily movement. These are the substages, exercise of reflexes, primary circular reactions, secondary circular reactions, secondary schemata, tertiary circular reactions, inventions of new means through mental combinations. This stage typically takes place within the first two years of a child's life. At this point, they will use their senses to learn things about both themselves and their environment. For example, a baby might giggle or smile because he or she perceives something as funny or interesting. Let's come now to the pre-operational stage. Builds on the skills learned earlier, language development, walking, and these are the sub-stages, the preconceptual and intuitive. This stage begins around age 2 and lasts until approximately age 7. During this period, children are thinking at a symbolic level but are not yet using cognitive operations. For example, role-playing is a thing at this stage. Your kiddo may pretend to be daddy or mommy, a teacher or a doctor to name a few. Next is the concrete operational stage. Here, Children are now able to think concrete or logical thoughts, conservation, reversibility, and seriation. In this stage, it is characterized by logical operations such as conservation, reversibility, or classification allowing logical reason. For examples of concrete operational stage, telling tales, planning a party, building with blocks, and comparing candy bars. The last stage is the former operational stage. Under this stage, the characteristics are there is consideration of the abstract, interpropositional thought, hypothetical deductive reasoning, and newly emerging values and ideas. The formal operational stage begins at age 12 and lasts into adulthood. As adolescents enter the stage, they gain the ability to think in an abstract manner 
by manipulating ideas in their head without any dependence on concrete manipulation. So let us have an example. Children are capable of thinking about abstract and hypothetical ideas that lead to multiple solutions or possible outcomes. So these are the criticisms of Piaget's theory. First, his clinical method lacked sufficient scientific control. Next, much of his work was conducted with his own children as subjects. His examination of cognitive change did not have a lifespan orientation. He may have underestimated children's capabilities. He did not discern well between competency and performance. He placed too little emphasis on the influence of motivation and emotions. His stages of development were too broad. And lastly, he described but did not clearly explain development. Let us now come to the general theories of intellectual development, the adulthood. Development is a lifelong process. Need to understand all age groups, has post-formal operations, and has intellectual decline. The intellectual decline can be classified into two. It can be total decline, or it can be also a partial decline. When we say post-formal operation, the term post-formal has come to refer to various stage characterizations of behavior that are more complex than those behaviors found in the J's last stage, the formal operations, and generally seen only in adults. Age differences in memory can be implicit and explicit. The characteristics of implicit memory are unintentional, automatic, without awareness, and does not change much in adulthood. So for example, seeing a familiar song, riding a bike, brushing your teeth, and typing on your computer keyboard are just examples of implicit memory. Under explicit memory, the characteristics are deliberate, effortful, and thus improves from infancy to adulthood, then declines. Let us have an example of explicit memory. Remembering all the items in your shopping list, the birth dates of your friend and family, and remembering the important events from your life. So there are ways to allay or combat cognitive decline. First is exercise and physical activity are highly correlated with cognitive function. Physical exercise is a promising non-pharmaceutical intervention to prevent age-related cognitive declines. This is based, according to Berer, Erickson, and Hugh Ambrose, 2013. Underknowledge development and sport performance. Improvements to the task-specific knowledge base may lead to better task-specific sport performance. The categories of knowledge can be declarative or procedural. When learning a sport, both forms of knowledge are important. When dealing with declarative knowledge, it is the knowledge of facts, data, and pieces of information. In terms of procedural knowledge, the knowledge exercised in the performance of some tasks involves one's ability to do something. So let us have the synopsis of our topic. We will be watching a short video clip about the cognitive development. Piaget's theory argues that we have to conquer four stages of cognitive development. First, the sensory motor stage. Second, the pre-operational stage. Third, the concrete operational stage. And fourth, the formal operational stage. Only once we have gone through all the stages, at what age can vary, we are able to reach full human intelligence. 1. The sensory motor stage, ages birth to 2. In the sensory motor stage, we develop through experiences and movement our five senses. Our brain wants to see, hear, smell, taste and touch as much as possible. First, we start with simple reflexes, 
and soon after we develop our first habits. From four months old, we become aware of things beyond our own body, and then as we get older, we learn to do things intentionally. A key milestone is the development of working memory, or in Piaget terms, our realization of object permanence. Before that, our mom can show and then hide a teddy, and we would think it's gone. After, we understand that objects continue to exist, even when we can't see them. We start becoming curious about everything. We want to smell flowers, taste food, listen to sounds, and talk to strangers. To explore more, we move. We learn to sit, crawl, stand, walk, and even to run. This increased physical mobility consequently leads to increased cognitive development. But we remain egocentric, meaning we can perceive the world only from our own point of view. Two, the pre-operational stage, ages two to seven. Our thinking is mainly categorized through symbolic functions and intuitive thoughts. We have lots of fantasies and believe objects are alive. As we are not able to apply specific cognitive operations, Piaget calls this stage pre-operational. We learn to speak and understand that words, images and gestures are symbols for something else. When we draw our family, we are not concerned about drawing each person to scale, but rather with their symbolic meanings. We love to play pretend, which allows us to experience something new and learn a lot. At around age four, most of us become very curious and ask many questions. We want to know everything. We can call it the birth of primitive reasoning. Piaget calls it the intuitive age, because while we realize that we have a vast amount of knowledge, we have no idea how we acquired it. Our thinking in this stage is still pretty egocentric. We think others see the world like we do and still don't understand that they see it differently. Three, the concrete operational stage, ages seven to 11. We finally discover logic and we develop concrete cognitive operations, such as sorting objects in a certain order. One example of this is inductive reasoning, which means that if we see someone eating a cookie, we can draw a conclusion and then make a generalization. And we now get the concept of conservation, we understand that if we pour orange juice from a normal glass to a taller one, the amount stays the same. Our younger sister will pick the taller glass, thinking she gets more. By the same logic, we only now can understand that if 3 plus 5 equals 8, then 8 minus 3 must equal 5. Our brain learns to rearrange our thoughts, to classify and build concrete operational mental structures. For example, we now know that we can reverse an action by doing the opposite. Excited by our new mental abilities, we apply them in conversations, activities, when we learn to write and in school. As a result, we get to know ourselves better. We begin to understand that our thoughts and feelings are unique and not necessarily those of others. That means that we learn to put ourselves in someone else's shoes. Four, the formal operational stage, age 12 plus. Once we become teenagers, we become formally operational. We now have the ability to think more rationally about abstract concepts and hypothetical events. Our advanced cognitive abilities allow us to understand abstract concepts such as success and failure, love and hate. We form a deeper understanding of our own identity and our morality. We now also think that we understand why people behave the way they behave and as a result can become more compassionate. Our brain can now do deductive reasoning, which means we can compare two statements and reach a logical generalization. Our new mental skills allow us to plan our life systematically and prioritize, and we can make assumptions about events that have no necessary relation to reality. We can now also philosophize and just think about thinking itself. 
our new sense for our identity now also creates egocentric thoughts, and some start to see an imaginary audience watching them all the time. Piaget believed in lifelong learning, but insisted that the formal operational stage is the final stage of our cognitive development. Jean Piaget's first interests were animals, and he published his first scientific paper on albino sparrows in 1907, when he was just 11 years old. In 1920, he began working with standardized intelligence tests. He realized that younger children consistently make types of mistakes that older children do not. He concluded that they must think differently, and spent the rest of his life studying the intellectual development of children. So that ends our report. Thank you and have a good day. Goodbye.